All right, welcome into Study Ball as we continue to prepare for the NFL Draft. We're taking a look and evaluating all these different quarterbacks. I've already said it's really hard to do because the college game isn't what I believe a lot of them are going to be asked to do in the pro game, so you're trying to figure it out. But every year I try to take uh, either a portion of tape or I try to take one whole game for each of these guys and break it down to look and see what I can glean from the entirety of a game because so many different things happen in the course of a game so that's why I like to look at one game the highs and lows the good the bad not just put together a highlight tape but I had somebody on Twitter that said okay you know you're you're saying different things about the offenses and the quarterbacks that are out there and what you're looking for how do these guys compare to your son because I've got a son that's uh, going to be going into his third year of college football played two years at Temple transferred to Rice will be at Rice this fall a uh, really good player uh, a quarterback that was top five in the nation last year in terms of pass yards per game. So it was a really good player. And they said, how does he compare to these guys? So I thought I would do a little experiment. So you need to play along with me. I need you to watch this tape because I'm going to break down my son first. One of the games that he had that I watched that I knew the defense was doing a lot of different things, throwing a lot of stuff at him. And I'm going to break down his game and what I see and how I like to look at tape. And then I'm going to go through uh, probably the top six quarterbacks. Maybe if we have time, I'll get to some of the other guys. But I want to take a look at each and every quarterback and show you what I'm looking for, what I believe can, uh, can transfer from the college level to the pro level, processing information, having a plan, and making certain kind of throws down the field. So let's dive into the tape on my son, EJ Warner. So this is going to be a game that EJ played last year against Navy. Now, I took out the screens. I'm going to take out the screens for all these guys because I'm not worried about the quick bubble screens and all that. And I'm going to look at just the pass concepts, plays, and the result. All right. So... Right here, Temple's going to have a little concept where they run quick out. They're going to run a hook and a hook, okay? So this up top is designed for a free access, meaning the corner's off, and I can kind of read this outside in, linebacker to linebacker. On the bottom, they're gonna run a curl and a free release flat, which is also a corner off beater, a free access beater back here. So as my son goes back, and this is why I picked this tape, you see what it looks like here is if Navy is going to run a four across cover four type defense. On the snap, you're going to watch. On the snap, what do they do? They roll to a cover two. Roll to a cover two back to this side. So they got EJ. It was a tough disguise. Hard to see that they're going to do this, this particular look. If he's reading it, he's probably going to read up to the top if he knows they're going to roll down here. And you see, if he goes up top, you're going to have one of these two receivers here uh, win against that outside linebacker. He goes down to the bottom, think he's going to have corner off. They roll to cover two. Not the best play. He's got to go try to make something happen. Nice job having a plan. Nice job working. Hey, don't have it to this side. Work back inside as you're scrambling. Makes a nice play right here, even though he was fooled by the defense. And that's going to become part of this, right? Is that sometimes you're going to be fooled. You're not always going to have the right answer right off the bat. Defenses are good as you get to the higher level. How do you react to those things? We've got a number of quarterbacks in this draft that are going to respond really, really well to the off-schedule stuff. All right. So again, different looks. Getting different looks. What are you seeing? Okay, so they've got a play here that they call bullets, or that I call bullets, I should say. Okay, so it's a little hook to the inside and then a bullets route, kind of a half swing, half shoot route by the running back. Okay, on the bottom, they're going to run a play here that goes similar to this. So what you're seeing right here is it looks as if you got man-to-man -man coverage on the backside, which is exactly what you want for bullets, okay? You're thinking maybe this back here, this backer here has the back on this bullet, okay? So you're looking to come out and see how this guy reacts to the play. So you can throw it quick or you can throw it down the field. Again, really good defense by Navy that they bring pressure with this guy. So as a quarterback, you think, okay, I'm gonna get the back 
right now or I'm going to have him on a big play if the next backer has to come over and get him. But they do a great job of going, nope, we're going to fool you. We dropped the defensive end to cover. So it's a tough look to the backside once again. You got an initial look, and then you've got a post-snap look. You see him. He's like, oh, man, they're bringing pressure. I know they're bringing pressure there, and this guy peels off on my back. I got two on one right here. What's my response? Response, boom. Nice job putting it on the back shoulder, seeing that that defensive end, not used to coverage, is going to play high shoulder technique. Let's put it on the back shoulder, and again, let's make this play work even though it's not the best look. Okay, could have easily gone down here. So this is the stuff that I'm looking at. Why did he go up top? I see 100% why he went up top. If they bring all these guys on pressure, it's this backer that's covering the back. Okay, love that situation. Get it on the back right now. Let him go one-on-one. -on -one. They just did a nice job. If he doesn't like what he's got on the backside, he can read this because the corner's off. One to two over to this side, but Problem solving, having a plan, understanding what you're doing pre-snap, and then being able to make the play work based on what the defense does. Okay, you're going to see this all through college football. This will go to the NFL as well. This is the RPO, okay? So you've got the quick out on the backside. Uh, you've got a run play up there. You notice that we've got six blockers against basically six defenders right here so we could hand this football off we got enough to block it and we're simply looking uh at what's going on on the outside now here it almost looks as if you say i'm gonna hand this off because this defensive end is standing up he's a little bit wider he could be a drop defensive end ej does a nice job of peeking him on the snap what does he do on the snap he takes his one step down inside he knows he's got off coverage with this corner so Boom, ball's out of his hands. He knows he's got a window. Go get the completion. Instead of forcing six to have to block six up underneath. So again, these are the kind of things that I'm looking at. Is that I understand he could have handed the football off. His eyes are on the one guy that's a problem guy. If this guy drops out, kind of like he did on the last play, goes out to, uh, to cover the out, you hand the football off. If this guy steps down, knowing where your eyes need to be, boom, ball's out of his hands. He's going to get a completion. Nice seven, eight yard completion there All right so another play everybody's gonna run they're gonna run a little play action here this back is gonna work to the flat then they're gonna run Poco post corner with the flat okay so with this particular look right here, you always want to kind of peek and see if you got a chance on the post. They don't have a chance on the post. The safety's getting right back into the middle. So now it becomes a high-low read on whoever the flat defender is over here. So he comes back, see the safety. Safety does what he's supposed to do. He's right there. Now you got this flat defender. Flat defender holds down, holds down. Even though the back has trouble getting out here to the flat to hold him, he gets the back to hold. Boom, there it is, up over the top, great throw, high and away, right? This guy's the problem. You drive it, you keep it flat, he becomes a problem there. Throws him up the field, great accurate throw, up high, good read, negotiating the guy on the outside. But again, knowing the process. This is what I wanna see from college quarterbacks to know, hey, will it translate? Will it translate to the NFL is knowing the process. Who am I looking at? Where do I get my eyes? Get the ball out on time, and then the ability to make these kind of throws. Okay, got another RPO. Same thing that we just saw. Here's the quick out. Uh, they're bringing pressure down this side, so now we know we don't really have enough to block. So we're really looking to make the throw here because they're bringing pressure to the front side. Now, still have to know what's this guy gonna do. Is he gonna drop and run out under it? Or is he going to come? So EJ again, nice job with his eyes. Sees that that defensive end comes down. Boom, ball's out. Okay, otherwise, he's got the option to go to the top and throw one of these guys because the pressure and the extra guy is coming from that side if he doesn't like it down here. But doing a nice job of using the eyes to see the defenders on the snap, know where the problem is. Oh, he takes one step down, no problem. Ball's out of my hands. 
and we're getting another completion. I know this is one that he wants to have back. Coming across with the back, you don't ever really account for a corner blitz right here. So the corner's coming. He's wondering if he's going to be what we call hot. If anybody's going to go get him because the back's responsibility is really up in here first. But they do a nice job of sorting this out and they've got a play call here where they've got a little wheel route right here. EJ feeling that pressure. He decides to let it go early and he's gonna try to hit the first window here because the next backer is tucked inside. He's gonna to try to hit the first window right here and put it on him. Ah, not quite high enough. Linebacker does a nice job of undercutting it and almost getting an interception right here. The thought, I understand the thought because of what he sees and because of the pressure, but what you really love is to trust your guys to do their job and then lay this ball up and over. We get this guy to chase on the post this linebacker comes down. This is a touchdown right here. I know he would love to have that one back and just hold it up a little bit, a little bit more air on it, and we got ourselves a completion. But you understand the process. Process here is I think the back's going to go, and his responsibility is this backer here. Is somebody taking the corner? Love the idea that he's got the thought that, hey, I may be hot. I got to get this out quick. But if you can feel the pickup or even if you can bounce back a little bit more, buy time away from him and allow this guy to get going, now you've got a chance to maybe get that big one and probably a walk-in touchdown right here. Okay, something that Navy did a lot is they brought what we call blitz zero. Okay, so you notice zero safety's back. Gonna go man-to-man. -man. They're gonna try to overload you with the pressure. Okay, so I wanna see the process. Ah, I see the blitz zero. I'm gonna bring my extra guy in. We're gonna to try to block this up. You see it, there's the blitz zero. Nobody back, we got man to man. They do a nice job of creating a play for a quick one-off slant right here. Extra guys coming from this side, have a plan. Have a pressure plan. Boom, ball's out of his hands. Get yourself a completion, but you have a plan, you have a process against pressure. I talk about it all the time in the NFL. What's your process? What's your plan against pressure? Oh, they're bringing it all out. I'm gonna bring an extra guy in the block. Doesn't really matter because the guy covered him, comes anyways, so I'm still hot. I still got an extra guy. What are you gonna do? Have a plan, boom, ball's out of his hands. Go get yourself a completion. Okay, so we're gonna see it back to back. He sees it again. Is it gonna be blitz zero? It looks like it, right? Man to man across the board. Everybody else is walked up. So he makes a check to one of their blitz zero checks. Oh, this is their change up, right? There's their change up. Oh, looks like blitz zero. Now they're all dropping out of it. They're going back to a cover four, basically dropping eight guys out. So they go from an all out blitz to dropping eight, which is the toughest thing. No, and have a plan. Okay, so we call, he makes this check here, and we call a play that says, hey, I got a quick throw out here, I've got something deeper here so I can buy time and take a shot down the field, but then they run out of it, corner is off, I'm not gonna panic and go, oh shoot, they didn't bring me pressure, and I checked to something else, go get your completion to the outside, have a plan. Pressure plan, pressure plan, pressure plan. I'm going to talk about it, I'm going to talk about it, I'm going to talk about it. All right, so they've got a play right here where they're going to go here, here, and here. And on the back side, they're going to run combo, a slant, and a flat. So he's got uh, pressure beaters all over the place. The extra guy is going to come from this side. Here's my hot. And watch it right here as we run it. There it is. There's the free hitter. He's coming right at EJ. What are you going to do now? you got to read that flat defender. Flat defender stays wide. I'm going to take the hook inside of it. If he squeezes, I can take the flat. Nice job again right here. See it. Understand it. Have a plan. Bang. Ball's out of his hands. Another completion against the pressure. All right. So here they come once again with the pressure from the one side. He knows it's going to be a tough play. They've got a hook 
and an N over to this side so you see all the bodies over there and you see the pressure, pressure coming from this side. You're going to try to buy some time over here. They got a double move called. Boom. Trying to get his shot. Okay. Trying to make a play, right? These things are going to happen. They got the perfect defense called. They got pressure. They're falling into your numbers. Get out here. Try to create. Okay. Doesn't work out. Get a PI though on this particular play, but giving your guy a chance to make a play. Things break down. Can you go make a play for your team? All right, this might have been my favorite play of this game. So they're going to run a double seam concept. Okay, so this with a stop out here. I'm not sure what they're running at the top, if this is a stop or a go route over there. Okay, so it's in the short side. We've already cut down the space, and you're going to notice that uh, it looks like uh, Navy is going back to a quarters look. Okay, so it's four deep across there. All right, so the big key on four deep it's going to be two things. Where's this backside safety? Is he in a position where he pushes over to take this front side seam? So that's the first thing you got to see. Second thing is where is this front side safety? Is this front side safety outside of number three giving you a shot down the middle of the field? Okay. So as we come back, could have easily taken the one on one to the backside if you felt like this safety was too far into the middle of the field, you got the one on one. But Here's the process, okay? He comes back, he sees this safety, get outside. He feels that safety on the backside and says, hey, if I get this ball out quick enough, he cannot get there, and you see it, boom. Ball's out of his hands, great throw, keeps his guy up the front side hash, away from that safety who he knows is the problem. Boom, nice play, nice touchdown, but just a good read. Like These are the things that I'm going to be looking for from all of the guys. Processing information, understanding what you're seeing, understanding your problems, and then being able to make the play accordingly. Great throw, good catch, good touchdown, put it all together. Okay, another look that looks like they walked everybody up. Are they going to bring pressure? They're not going to bring pressure. Got to have a plan. Brings an extra guy down. This time, we're running everybody out of there. Okay, so he brings the guy down. Looks like maybe we're going to block it like we did earlier, but now we're just going to release everybody. You got your quick throws down the middle, under, under. Then on the backside, we've got the slant with the flat. And again, Navy once again is going to give you the look, and then they're going to run out. Quick, back, ball out, right? Here's a throw, the quick slant in between these two Pop out the finish. You got to beat them with the throw. You got to be ready from a timing standpoint. Bang, balls out, beats both of those guys, or really beats the inside linebacker with the throw. Nice reaction again, understanding it could be blitz zero, or they could run out to some sort of zone. What's your plan? What's your process? Get a completion. Okay, so they're going to run another double seam concept. Seam, seam. Stops on the outside here. Okay, so you come back and you got a quarters look. Okay, quarters look here. You've got safeties inside on these seams. Get right outside to your one-on-one -on -one and you've got to negotiate the outside linebackers. Because again, you see drop eight. Eight guys dropping into coverage right here makes throwing the football that much tougher. He's going to slide a little bit, kind of feels the pressure, going to slide. And here's a throw. Can you make this throw? This guy gets out underneath the stop route. Okay, so you can't throw it through a guy. Can you lay it up over the top? The touch throw, the up and down type throw. Boom, great throw, great touch. Underneath guy, playing it well, but he can't go get the football. Right, so much about getting completions. Moving, positive plays as much as you possibly can based on the scenario that you're seeing, okay? What I like about Temple is they give EJ lots of options. They give him plays that have good people in conflict. They allow him to have someone to read and get his eyes on, which is part of the problem that I see with some other offenses that make me make it hard for me to evaluate some of those guys. Okay, so here's another play, a play you're going to see in the NFL all the time. It's going to be a stick down here, a stick and a flat. Up top, 
we're going to run a hook, a hook, and a swing. Okay, so kind of pick a side, try to find the numbers here. Okay, so it does a nice job of where are your numbers? We got one underneath guy. This guy's dropping down to make two underneath guys to that side. So we've got one, two, three. Over here, they basically got two underneath guys to our two receivers. So you got to find the numbers, go away from the numbers. He does that right here. Reed is off of this outside linebacker. Throw probably should have gone right here. Don't know if he didn't see him because of this guy. Got through it too quickly. But that's where the throw should probably go because we've isolated this guy. Which one of these two does he want to take? He takes the outside one. So look to throw it there. Probably could have a little bit better spacing here by these two guys. They're a little tight, but still finds a way to get the completion. He just throws it to the inside guy. Maybe the right throw is to the outside guy. But either way, you got soft to the inside. Either way works for you, but seeing the process, reading the outside guy, making sure that you understand where your isolation or man in conflict is on each play. All right, here we go again with Navy, right? Giving you one look. What are you gonna do? Pressure, no pressure. What's your answer against either one of them? There we go again. Come back. Called all hitches. Hey, they bring pressure. They're off on the outside. Let's hit them with the hitch. Oh, shoot. Here they go again. They're going to pop everybody out. Have a plan. Boom. Get back. Get the ball out of your hands. Get the completion. So they did a nice job of going, hey, we got answers against all out pressure, but it also gives us an answer if they bail out and run everybody out. But quarterbacks have to know what each answer is and how he's got to beat the defense. Beats it there with a quick hitch. All right, so again, this is why I picked this, this tape. This isn't easy. This isn't easy for anybody. You got all these guys coming, NFL level or whatever. Are they coming? Are they not coming? Sometimes they're blitzing everybody. Sometimes they're popping out. I got to have answers for either one of those things. This time, they're going to bring it all. There it is. Two guys in his face right here. What's your plan? What's your pressure plan? How are you going to beat this pressure? Because you don't have enough guys to block it with the throw. They got a quick out right here. He sees it. He understands it. Bang. Nice throw. Good timing. Gets it out of his hands. Get ourselves a first down against the all-out pressure. All right, so we're coming off the play action. Trying to get the big throw down the field. Post. Post. Looks like an over right here. And then the back is going to leak to the flat. Okay, so we get... A quarter's coverage here. All right, so we, we might have a shot at this post here based on this safety chasing inside, but you see the corner is squatted inside. We've got such an, a far outside route. Like he's so far outside the numbers, that defensive back goes, I'm not going to jump outside of him. I'm going to sit inside of him. Okay, and then we've got kind of the over and the flat here. Feels the pressure coming off the edge. Doesn't really have time to set up and see if that over, right? You kind of see... This over may be coming here, but doesn't really feel like he's got time to hold it. Get it out and get a completion. Boom, move, make the throw. Not a huge play, but something positive happening for your team. All right, so here's one. Again, another one he wants to have back. All right, and it happens. You miss some, right? You miss some. Another reason why I wanted to pick this tape, because you don't play the game perfect. You make some mistakes. Everybody does. Okay, so why you make the mistake? What is the mistake? So they're going to run what we call a 48 combination. A four is an in, and then a post route up over the top. We want it against quarters coverage, which is what they get right here is a quarters cover. So we got the right coverage for what we want. Okay, so you see him start off to the right. Okay, but does a nice job. He starts off and he goes, I'm going to take this hitch over here. Oh, shoot. This guy buzzes underneath it. So nice job to go. I got a plan. Okay, I didn't get it. Don't panic. I say don't panic. He throws an interception on this play. But he goes back and he goes, okay, I don't have that. Let me go back and read it. So he gets the right read. This safety jumps the in route. Now we're going to go try to get the post up over the top of it. So I like the process. Go take the hitch, just get a completion. Oh shoot, that guy buzzes, don't panic. Come back, read it out to the front side, have the ability to do both. But here, just a bad throw. You know, I know he told me on this play, he didn't see the corner here. Um, 
on this play. So he tries to throw it up and outside, but either way, not a real good throw. This guy's running through to the post. You got to trust it. You see this safety jump. You lay this thing to the spot. This is a timing throw. Don't necessarily try to throw him open unless you know somebody's coming to take it away. Lay the ball where it's supposed to be. Instead, he tries to throw it out and adjust him, right? Probably not going to be a completion anyways because his receiver's doing what he's supposed to do. Go into the hash. Lay the ball to the hash. Read inside. Throw the ball to where your receiver's going. Tries to adjust him here. Doesn't see the body. Throws it out there and throws an interception. Okay, so has a great game overall, but he makes a couple mistakes along the way, and here's one of them, leads to an interception. Okay, this may be the toughest look that a team can give you a lot of times, because they're gonna run what we call a blitz two. Okay, so they're gonna bring pressure off the edge, which is forcing a hot situation. So an unblocked guy, and then they're going to run to a cover two shell over the top of it. And so what makes it hard is that oftentimes we're hitting hots quick uh, and, and there's no bodies in the position that they bring pressure from. So a lot of times they bring pressure, you expect an off corner, and a lot of times you can hit these quick throws in the void as they're trying to drop a safety down into the spot. Blitz two is different, okay? So here, what happens is they bring pressure, you see the free hitter, okay? And look at this corner right here. He's trying to steal this. He's trying to read the eyes of the quarterback to go, okay, you don't expect me to come from the outside and get this. So great job here, great adjustment. Boom, we get the ball out and we get the completion right here, okay? But there's a reason that I'm harping on this and showing you what they're doing because they run a hitch outside and a hitch inside, okay? So normally cover two, you expect that corner to stay out there and now you're replacing the void of that linebacker that comes, you replace it inside. Boom, really well done right here. This was the plan going in. If they got this, this was what he was going to do to replace it. And he does a nice job right here getting the completion. His guy breaks a tackle. We go get a big, long play on this. And this was all because of film study being ready for that blitz too. Not going to show it a lot, but they're going to show it every once in a while. Unfortunately, the fumble at the end there uh, and Navy gets the football, but it was a great react to that blitz too. That'll come back and show itself later in the game. Okay, so here's another RPO. Okay, so guys in here, we're reading the bodies. Who's out here? We've got the quick out with the corner off. Okay, do you like it? Do you like the throw on the outside? Quick set, lay the ball out there, go get a completion. Well done, seeing the numbers, making the play. Okay, so here we go again. Told you it was gonna show up. Okay, one thing that you'll notice is the split of this guy on this particular play because they're running it out here instead of a hitch and then the hook inside. So this is the blitz two I was talking about. Okay, so they're gonna bring the pressure, gonna have the free hitter. The last time receiver was out wider, ran the hitch and they ran the hitch and they were able to hit the one inside for the big play. This time they've condensed it. So they've made it easier on the corner here to be able to squeeze to the inside. It's really tough to see, right? We're seeing this guy come free. We know we've got to beat him with the throw. We just had success hitting that hole on this quick hitch. Now watch this corner. Does a great job right here. Oh, I got it. I got it again. I'm going to make the throw, but he squeezes it faster because of the split and the alignment, and he comes and steals this, right? If you're able to see all this, there's a lot to see. See the pressure, understand you're hot, and then see the corner and does he squeeze or not? That is a whole bunch to look at on this particular play. Tries to replace it, and a great play here by the corner. Boom, another interception right here, okay? So we've got two interceptions. This one, again, like this is what we look at. A lot of people can look at Sass and go, well, this is an interception here by EJ. Yeah, two interceptions in this game. First one, no question. All on EJ, not a good throw. Uh, you put the ball in a bad spot, threw it right to the corner. That one's on him. This one, this one's on the defense. This, to me, is a great play by the defense. EJ had a great plan, knew what he was trying to do, and because of scenarios around him, the split uh, made it easier on the corner, and then a great play by the corner, boom, to come in and make the interception. He's trying to replace, he's trying to do everything he's supposed to do, and now we can sit back and go, okay, well, see the corner, right? See the hot, see the corner, and throw this one out here. That, to me, I know is fairly unrealistic, and that's why 
when I watch these guys, whether it's my son or somebody else, I'm going to judge them based on the plan. I'm going to see, does the defense win based on a good play, or does the defense win because the quarterback or somebody else makes a mistake? First one, EJ made a mistake. Defense wins that one, but that's on the quarterback. This one, I don't believe is on the quarterback. This is just a great play by the corner to understand what he saw the first time and to react accordingly the second time and make an unbelievable play on the throw. Okay, so they're gonna bring pressure from the backside. Here it is. They got the blitz two idea once again, okay? So this guy's coming in to steal it. They're bringing pressure here, but this time EJ knows he's got it picked up because they're coming to, to that two receiver side where the offensive line is sliding. So they've got a play that I used to call popping, okay? So it's a pop, a swing, and then an in. That's where the pop in comes from, a pop in and in uh, here. So on this particular play, we're going to read this guy first. What's this guy do? If this guy gets depth, then we read the outside backer hook to swing. If that inside linebacker moves with width to take away this pop, replace back behind it with the end. So we come here. He knows he's protected on the backside, reading this defender here. Now that defender kind of does both. He overruns the end, but he also has depth. So EJ could have come down to the pop here, but he sees that overrun. Boom, puts the ball back inside to his guy, reading a defender, understanding what he's seeing, having a plan based on what they're doing. Boom, gets himself a completion, great throw. Nice chunk play for a first down. Okay, you're gonna run a sprint out right here. Nice little play call, look like they're doing a switch. Kind of a switch go right here, but what's going to happen is both of these guys are going to come back and run late stops right here. Good job with the protection to be able to kind of seal the edge. Nice job by EJ to kind of play this thing out. Sees the extra body inside, so we work outside to our one-on-one. -on -one. Boom, nice throw on the sideline, on the move, first down. All right, now we, I know we all want completions on every play. So we're gonna run an out and an up right here. Then we're gonna replace with a little hook underneath it. We're trying to get them to jump that out. We've hit the out a number of times, trying to get them to jump the out and get the one up over the top. See the little pump fake right there? Nothing going, right? They're dropping back. They've got two bodies in here. He knows he can't get back to the other side even if something is open. So sometimes a win for a quarterback is a throwaway. Sometimes the win is the throwaway. And I know we don't like to see it and we're going to use it. It's an incompletion or whatever. This is why you watch the tape. Because you say, okay, got an incompletion here. Is it a bad throw? Is it a bad decision? Or is it simply the defense won this rep right here? They won the rep. My first guy's not open. My second guy's not open. I don't have a chance to work from there. Throw the ball into the ground. Live for another day. Okay, here we go again with a similar play we saw earlier. The out, the hook, the hook, then they're gonna run the curl and the flat back here. All right, so talked about it earlier, both of these are really a corner off look and he doesn't really have a corner off to either side. See this corner kind of roll up, although maybe at the end he comes off of it, but not really your favorite play. This corner comes off down here, not really your favorite play. And on top of that, we leave a guy free to the backside, okay? Not really sure why we're leaving a guy free here. I don't know what the protection call was, but you'd like to see a slide to at least one of those guys because one guy ends up peeling on the back and we'd like to have that covered. We shouldn't leave both of those guys free because you see, we've only got really a three-man line. We should block those three guys for sure. But regardless, guy comes free right there, so now he's got to make a play. Not the, the best look. Corner sitting here. Great anticipation with the guy in his face. Let the ball go. Throw it to the outside. Right? He knows that this guy's the big problem here. That corner squeezing. Okay? That he's got to put the ball 
and let it go ahead of time. Puts it to the outside numbers. Nice completion there, pressure in his face. Once again, having a plan with where he wants to go with the football. A really nice job right there of not getting the best look. Being able to make it work, understanding what he needs to do on a particular play, and then having the pressure in his face. How do you react with that pressure in your face? Right? EJ's game is not to buy time, run around, and make a crazy play. It's to beat it mentally with a throw, with this timing, with this anticipation. Does a nice job right there. All right, so here they come with the blitz zero once again. Okay, so bringing that all out pressure right here. Do a nice job of picking it up because this guy's not pressuring. So they do a nice job of picking it up. They've got a hook and then a post up over the top of it. Does a nice job of buying time. The thought is good. Thought is good. Again, just got to kind of throw it to your guy, right? Knowing that these guys are down and man, probably throw this a little bit more across the field, kind of lay it out there. Uh, and, and try to make a play. So had a good play call there. It was tough. Guy on the outside getting jammed. Pressure's coming in your face. Trying to anticipate where he's going to go. And just puts this ball up and over the top. Can't win them all, right? Can't win them all. But again, I like the process. Okay, you're not going to make every throw every single play. Right? The defense is going to win. They're going to make it hard. You're going to miss some throws physically. But are you making the right decisions? Putting the ball in the right spot becomes a huge part of the evaluation. All right. So again, what are they doing? Can you tell? You've watched it four or five times now. Are they bringing the all-out pressure or are they not? They're going to run a play here. A lot of teams run. Okay, so it's double under with a corner up over the top. It looks like they're going to bring the pressure and it's man, man, man. Okay, but we've seen, are these guys going to pop out again? So here we get the pop out. Okay, yet they're still playing man behind it and they're just popping out a bunch of bodies underneath. So you could come out here and maybe take this quick one to the outside, trying to beat that pressure. But you see both guys jump it. He comes out to look, both guys hold and jump it. Nice job going up over the top. Seeing the man to man, laying the throw to the corner. And the other thing is position of the football, right? These are the other things that you look at. I know everybody can make this corner throw that's in the NFL draft, no question. But look at how this guy down in the red zone, he knows he doesn't have to worry about being beat up over the top. So he's going to try to flatten and undercut this right here. See it? See how he's trying to undercut it? So if you drive it or you lay it flat, he can undercut it and pick it off. Great throw here by EJ up and over the top to where only his guy can get it. Guy can't undercut it. Boom, boom. Touchdown. I told you the double seam play was probably my favorite play in the game. I know this was EJ's favorite play in the game. Okay, so we come back late. They need to, to get a score. Okay, same thing happens here. They're going to bring pressure, and they're going to have a hot guy for EJ. Okay, they're going to run a play that I call corner. So it's a corner, and then they're going to get a guy to the flat. So if you get cover two, you want to try to read that corner, does he come down? Does he stay deep when you want to get the ball out of your hands? And then even worse, when they bring pressure and you got a guy in your face. So he comes out, he knows what he's looking at. He's looking at this corner right here. This corner, watch how hard he comes down. He comes down hard, boom, look at this. Guy in his face, look at this, look, look at this right here. Like you tell me, and again, these are the things you're looking for, right? May not be a game changer in terms of how he runs around like uh, a Caleb Williams or a Jaden Daniels, uh, I get that. But difference making throws are things like this. You're hot, this is a scenario. What do you do with this scenario? Ball's out of his hands, puts the ball right on the money, nice catch by his receiver, puts the ball on the money with pressure, boom. Getting themselves a touchdown in a needed situation, understanding the plan, making game changing decisions and processing and throws in the moment. All right, so again, this is a screen. I left it on here because this was a, a big play for him. But the biggest thing is it's a screen with an element to it. What do I mean by an element? So they're going to run this back to the outside. So this back becomes an option for them. If all of these guys stay inside, the guy's trying to chase the back and we snap it and everybody chases man, 
he's got the ability to throw it to the swing. So you've got to see the scenario. If you motion this guy and the corner stays outside of it, now we're gonna come and throw the screen back to the inside. So it's a screen with an element of something you have to read. So he's gotta come out and see this. This guy stays to the outside, right? They adjust to that part of it, come back to the inside. Nice throw on the money, being able to fall away. It's another thing that I like, you know, being able to be an athlete playing the position. I know a lot of people are gonna look again like uh, Daniels and, and Williams and athletically running really fast and doing that. Yes, no question that's athletic, but the ability to throw with your body in different positions, okay? To be able to use your body to make throws. This guy's coming here, I gotta fall away. I can't let him come and try to steal the football. So the ability to make accurate throws while you're falling away with your body, quick throws, get the ball out of your hands, boom. Get it out, get a completion, let your guys do work for you. All right, so there's assessment number one, EJ Warner, okay? So that's the kind of stuff that I'm looking at. Those are the kind of things that I'm evaluating on when I watch all these guys' plays. I take every play. What did you do? What did you see? Why did you do that? Did you make the proper decision when there was pressure? Did you make the right throw? Okay, I don't expect any of these guys to be perfect. I know a lot of these offenses don't allow them to have a plan in every scenario, but that's how I'm trying to evaluate because that's how you have to play in the NFL. You gotta make those tough throws. You gotta have a plan against pressure. You're gonna make some mistakes. How do you bounce back from the mistakes? What can you see? How quick can you process? So, got that question on Twitter. How does your son compare to these guys. I think my son processes information as well as anybody in college football uh, based on what I've seen. Now I watch him more than I watch anybody else. So, and I'm biased because I'm dad, I get all that. But you see what I'm talking about right there, his ability to process and get the ball out and make the right decisions with the football. Now this is what I'll be comparing all these other guys to when I watch the tape, but I wanted to give you guys an idea of how I look at it. And I also wanted to take my son and put him into the mix because He's not perfect. He made some mistakes in this game. You point out those mistakes, you evaluate the whole process, and you understand the quarterback position is not played perfectly. So I don't judge these guys on being perfect, but I judge them more on decision making and doing the right thing with the football as opposed to making every single throw, played the position, you're going to miss some throws, but it's the mental part and the decision making that I believe processes the best to the next level.